What is going on, wonderful people? It's Metacosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my biology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane or the cytoplasmic membrane. We talked about the nucleus and the nucleolus. We covered the organelles, such as the Golgi apparatus, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is studied by ribosome. We talked about the mitochondrion, which is the powerhouse of the cell, to give you energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. We talked about the cytoskeleton, the microfilaments, the microtubules, and more. Today, it's time to focus on the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. What does the word karyote mean? It means a nut, and it refers to the nucleus. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Remember that biology means the study of life. Microbiology is the study of small life or microscopic life. You see this thing right here? This is a nucleus. This is a nucleus of a human cell or an animal cell. Notice that the nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. This characteristic is peculiar to eukaryotes, not prokaryotes. Prokaryotes will not have this lovely nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleus. Instead, the prokaryotes will have naked DNA that is not membrane bound. By the way, here is a pearl for the pros. Where do you find DNA? You find DNA in the nucleus, that's the main site of the DNA, of course. You also find it in the mitochondria, there's the mitochondrial DNA, which is abbreviated M tDNA for mitochondrial DNA. And if you happen to be a plant, then your chloroplast, or as they say in the UK, chloroplast, contains DNA as well. Let's talk about the origin of the word. Prokaryote, what does that mean? Pro means primitive, or before, or earlier. Karyote is the nut. The nut refers to the nucleus. So instead of complaining to your buddy that he's driving you nuts, you should say, you're driving me karyotes. Only then will you be my student, and only then will I be proud of you. Contrast that with eukaryotes. You means true, as in the word utopia, true city, or a virtuous city, etc. You means true, and topia from the Greek topos, which means a city or a place. There is a branch of mathematics known as topology, which studies the positions in space. And it also studies making knots, which is a very fascinating field of mathematics. If you are familiar with the enzyme topoisomerase, that's where the word comes from. And I've talked about topoisomerase in my biochemistry playlist. So prokaryotes means primitive nucleus, i.e., there is no robust nuclear membrane. And that's why some textbooks will say that prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, meaning they do not have a beautiful nucleus that looks like this, that is membrane-bound and confined. But eukaryotes have a true nucleus. They do have a nucleus that is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. Not only is the nucleus surrounded by a nuclear membrane in the eukaryote, but also the organelles are membrane-bound as well. Let's compare between you and the bacteria. The bacterium is a prokaryote, but you are a eukaryote. Do bacteria have cell walls? Yes, they do. Do humans have cell walls? No, we do not. Instead, we have a cell membrane. Also, the bacteria have a cell membrane. You can call it cell membrane, plasma membrane, or cytoplasmic membrane. Call it whatever the flip you want to call it. We call it cell membrane because it's a membrane that surrounds the cell. Plasma membrane because it's semi-solid or plasma-like. Cytoplasmic membrane because it surrounds the cytoplasm. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, please drop a human emoji in the comments. Speaking of cytoplasm, what's the difference between cytosol and cytoplasm? I'm glad you asked. If you open your biology textbook, you'll find these definitions, which are so boring. Instead, let's do better. The protoplasm is the cytoplasm and the nucleus together. So let's look at your cell. This is the nucleus, this is the cytoplasm. Add them together, they're called protoplasm. Now, what is the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm contains organelles such as the mitochondrion, such as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and more. And the non-organelle part, or the organelle-free portion of the cytoplasm is known as the cytosol. So cytosol plus organelles will give us cytoplasm. Cytoplasm plus nucleoplasm equals protoplasm. So you can say that protoplasm equals nucleoplasm plus organelles plus cytoplasm 
cytosol and this is how we do it the protoplasm is surrounded by your plasma membrane or your cell membrane or cytoplasmic membrane if you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Before we talk about the differences between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and they are many, let's first start about the similarities. What do prokaryotes and eukaryotes have in common? The answer is, both of them have a cell membrane or a plasma membrane, also known as a cytoplasmic membrane. Both of them have a cytoplasmic and therefore they have organelles and they have a cytosol. Both of them have DNA, both of them have ribosomes. And now on to the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are unicellular organisms, meaning one cell only. But eukaryotes could be unicellular or multicellular. Humans, of course, are multicellular. If you did not know this already, there is no hope for you. Prokaryotes are smaller cells, simpler cells. How small? About 0.1 to 5 micrometers or microns. Eukaryotes are bigger and more complex. How big? 10 to 100 microns. The DNA of prokaryotes is naked, meaning it's not enveloped by a membrane. It's not membrane bound, so it's naked. But in eukaryotes, the DNA is protein bound. It's surrounded by a membrane. In prokaryotes, the DNA is circular, sometimes linear, but mostly circular. In eukaryotes, it's linear. And of course, you know about your double-stranded DNA. The two strands are linear. The chromosomes in prokaryotes are single, meaning haploid, meaning N. But in eukaryotes, paired or diploid, di means two or double, and therefore 2N. In humans, 2N equals 46 chromosomes. Half of that will be 23 chromosomes. So N equals 23 and 2N equals 46 chromosomes in humans. In prokaryotes, the nucleus is not membrane bound. So we call it a nucleoid, i.e. similar to nucleus or nucleus-like. But it's not an actual nucleus because it's not membrane bound unlike in eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, the organelles are not membrane-bound, but in eukaryotes, they are membrane-bound. Prokaryotes do not have mitochondria, but eukaryotes do have mitochondria. So the bacterial cell does not have a mitochondrion. But how does the bacterium get its energy? Well, if you know the answer, let me know in the comments. Prokaryotes reproduce asexually and sexually, mostly asexually, but humans, of course, reproduce only sexually. I wish I could just simply divide by binary fission, but unfortunately I cannot, because I'm a eukaryote. Cell division in prokaryotes is via binary fission, so one cell simply divides into two. In eukaryotes, we divide by mitosis and or meiosis. So how do I grow bigger and bigger and bigger? This is mitosis. But before reproduction, I need meiosis for sperms and for ova. Give me an example of prokaryotes, bacteria. How about eukaryotes, humans? Here is a question for you. What about plants? Would you consider plants prokaryotes or eukaryotes and why? If you know, comment below. Let's add the similarities to our table. And now we have a humongous table which has the similarities between prokaryotes and eukaryotes or what they do have in common as well as the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Here is a simpler table about the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Are these all the differences? Of course not because if you have watched my video on DNA replication in my biochemistry playlist I've told you that during the replication of the DNA or creating a copy of the DNA which takes place place in the S phase or the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. There are many differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes when it comes to DNA replication. In prokaryotes and eukaryotes, we have a double-stranded DNA. I am not saying this about the chromosome. I'm saying this about the DNA because we just said that in prokaryotes, the chromosome is single and unpaired. But in eukaryotes, the chromosome is paired or diploid and it has a doozy centromere in the middle. But here I'm talking about the DNA. The DNA is going to be double-stranded whether you are prokaryote or eukaryote. The shape of the DNA is circular in the prokaryotes and linear in the eukaryotes. The origin of replication, where do you cut? In prokaryotes, you only cut once. For example, here. 
However, in eukaryotes, you can have many origins of replication per chromosome. Here is one, here is another one. Helicase is the enzyme that's going to unwind the DNA, whether you are a prokaryote or a eukaryote. And in order to stabilize the template strand, after unwinding, you will need single-stranded DNA binding proteins. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes need a primer, which is RNA, made by the primase. In order to make a copy of your DNA, in order to add new DNA polymers, you need DNA polymerase. And to join the Okazaki fragments in the lagging strand, you need DNA ligase. This is true for pro and for eukaryotes. And to remove the positive supercoils, you need DNA topoisomerase. However, only eukaryotes have a telomerase, but prokaryotes do not have a telomerase to make telomeres. To learn about all of this nonsense in greater detail, see my video on DNA replication in my biochemistry playlist. That video will also teach you about other differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, such as the type of the DNA polymerase or the number or the name, as well as how we replace the RNA with DNA. We talked about cells today. What are the four fundamental tenets of the cell theory? Number one, all living things are composed of cells. Facts. Number two, the cell is the basic functional unit of life. Based. Third, cells arise only from pre-existing cells. Also based. And number four, cells carry genetic information in the form of DNA. Now the virus said to itself, well, I cannot obey all of these four rules. So what about me? Would you consider me a living organism? The answer is no. We consider viruses to be particles or at the border between the living and the non-living because viruses do not follow the four tenets of cell theory. And you can learn more about viruses by watching my video called Introduction to Virology, which you can find in my virology playlist. Viruses are notorious for replicating very quickly. That's why everyone is trying to go viral and no one is trying to go bacterial. Wiser words have never been said before. You can download my biology notes, my physics notes, general chemistry notes, biochemistry notes, organic chemistry notes, anatomy notes, physiology notes, pathology notes, all kinds of notes on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. Check out my other playlists and if you want to learn about all the drama that takes place in your kidneys, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, glomerular filtration rate, renal clearance and more, download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes and cases. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe hit the bell smash like support my channel on patreon paypal or venmo go to my website to download my courses notes and cases or if you would like me to personally tutor you be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfectionatus where medicine chemistry math and physics make perfect sense